Bloodseeker mid Five is that he is, remaining. especially in this matchup, Bloodseeker Storm Spirit, he's incredibly dependent on his nighttime is halfway over, meaning that pretty much everybody is within kill range. Oh, nice. Samael just got that deny on CTY. He was going for the blood right kill on the creep. Top lane, they make it a big dime, and they will be able to pick up the first one. As well. Nice pick up, and CTY also dies in middle. Samael's able to force that one out. And it's not just because it's a Storm Spirit. It's more just the fact that CTY has now died in a one-on-one -on -one matchup that you shouldn't die in. Like, in most 1v1 matchups, you shouldn't. This is going to make him struggle really hard in uh -oh. RTK's mid now, though. This is a little awkward. Uh, Samael does get hit to silence. They do pick up the kill before AUI can actually stop it with the Burrow Shrike. And now with three heroes and the Vision, they'll get on top of AUI for a double kill. CTY, that was huge. Great rotation now from Ehome that now puts CTY in a much better for heroes that are able to sit alone in their lane because they're either just tanky enough or they put enough offensive pressure on the offlane or whatever it is, right? They're willing to group three different heroes there in middle because why the hell not? Uh, RTK is going to be dropping low here as EG do make a big rotation out. Now RTK will go down to the last couple right clicks, but at the same time, CTY comes in with a rupture. Sanking actually had to TP out because he was too low. Samael still has a lot of mana, though, and it's actually going to make the commitment for the Razor, but there goes the heal out from Wana, but the damage from Fear is still enough. Now, Samael is running out of mana, but he's still healthy enough to be able to battle up against CTY. Looks like Lana will be able to get the kill on Samael to start things off. The Tombstone is just too big. In fact, if anything, AUI is going to be caught as well as DDDC comes in from the side with a hex and uh, anybody else and uh, YJ is going to push this in and Sumail has no idea he's got a free jump for this one Hex already catching him out with the silence on top it's just a simple one two combination the hex into blood right that kind of guarantees the kill in the storm spirit all that extra damage and control is just excess from e home so evil geniuses they're gonna need a lot more rotation more fortuitous for e home but we do have double invis aui as well as some mail both invis up they pop the dust but aui and some mail just pull back up in time now they're gonna go for the universe who blinks his way to the side bro strikes up rotk and now some mail will make the initiation fear waiting for more of e home to come into the cone area will bounce himself away rotk pops the ultimate out of fear but is still put in a bad position by a defensive play oh, yeah, he gets a heal, but it's still not enough. The burst damage is there. Sure, can now bouncing around over to Lana with the extra bit of damage from Fear. They get another kill. The tombstone's all that's left for Ehome, except for CTY, who's desperate to be able to get this kill. Will be able to catch AUI. Samael forced to TP out. Rest of Evil Geniuses will actually all reach. Tombstone was going to be enough for them to take that fight. But more importantly than that, you just need vision. If you're against a bounty hunter and you're taking a blind fight like that, you're simply just asking to lose. Yeah, bottom lane, Lana's gonna be caught by another jump from Samael, and that's a bounty kill as well. <laughs> Not forget about the bounty hunter being a huge factor in these fights. Now three-man smoke, Epicenter leading the way. ROTK gonna be jumped on for a strike up. He's tanky as all hell, but he's gonna go down anyway. Evil geniuses just finding pickoff quickly. This is a problem with Bloodseeker. Just so squishy, especially when he's sitting with that blood rage now. ROTK is going to be jumped on. Uh, he's got the bounty to give the extra movement speed for Evil Geniuses to catch up, but it's still a Spirit Breaker. He's super tanky. The universe starts moving his way forward. He's going to make that jump. Sure enough, they're going to try and pop. ROTK, DDC, take it out. Will be able to go for the Hex. Great Sonic Wave there, but CTY is back, and he's going to try and take on some ale first. They managed to lock him down, but a Bloodstone Suicide just at the tail end of that death. Like, what happens if they just kite him around for five seconds and then turn on him? Yeah, exactly. So EG, they've got a DD on their Storm Shirt, so they might feel comfortable. They don't know he's coming, actually. Yeah, he's got the Glimmer Cape. He gets a double stun, but Samael's already jumped out with a double man. Pro Strike with Sonic Wave over the top. There goes one already down and out. The Undying is dead, and so too does Fall the Lion. YJ tries to seal some of the damage, but he's going to run out of his BKB soon. 17% onto Samael. The ultimate being popped as well. YJ dropping lower and lower, but they need a couple more right clicks. No! Now the Epicircle comes onto ROTK. They're going to be able to finish him off as well. CTY is dead. Desperate to get some cleanup here. They've already fought back on the Undying, but Evil Geniuses are just kiting around CTY forever. EG now is going to jump forward once again. First strike on Alana, throws out the Tombstone, tries to heal himself as much as possible, but with three heroes surrounding him, he'll just eventually be right clicked down, and CTY is forced back to his base. Simply can't help out his allies. That Waiting for that perfect initiation. CTY is in the background, too. That would be the perfect hero to go. Universe is smoked his pop. Blinks forward to the side there. Doesn't quite find anybody. EG 
Okay, they've seen the first one, RTK. That's not really the hero they wanted to go for first. Good Sonic Wave. Samael actually jumps for DDZ in the back, but now he gets hexed up. He actually is going to be caught here, but that's just the Aegis. And BKBs are going to be running out soon. That's why YJ runs forward with the plasma field. Starts trying to intercept Universe while the rest of the team focuses on going on Samael, but he's actually been saved by the Glimmer Cave. Here comes that epicenter. CTY is going to be the target, easily bursting down. The rest of the team going for fear, though. Samael jumps over, finishes off Lana. Fear managed to make the blink away on top of that one. Samael right in the middle of all these heroes, but he's got enough mana to be able to make a long jump out. Now the Universe comes back into play. RTK starts going for him on the left-hand side. Dyer's RTK starts going for Samael, but can't quite get him. Now intercepted Radiance by the Shuriken. And it looks like everyone else from Evil Genius has actually managed to get out. If they, they lose two, and all EG drop with that Aegis. If they had vision, yep. they would have killed Samael right there, and they could have continued to go for the chase. Oh, wow. Samael's going to get a free kill. Yeah. He might actually go down, though. He is only a little bit more mana left. Last bit of ball landing jump, but he gets caught off the tail end of the impale. So that one exchange, the very hand exchange from him. For because right now, he's been doing such a good job of not getting picked off, but oh, this could no. all change here as EG are set up for this. But do they think it's just a one-man kickoff or is the evil are around? Samel made a big jump straight for the background. Lion will manage to take him out. He's running low on mana. The rest of the E-Home are popping their BKVs and will be able to lock down PPD, who does have that Clipper Cape to help him survive a little bit longer. CTY is actually looking for more kills. Shane Frost does quite some havoc to uh, E-Home. In the end, it's a one-for-one trade-off. They're gonna lead the odds to CTY. BKD, though. Pop by CTY, and Samael's actually running low on men. They're gonna try and make a commitment for him. IG, they just turn on to Samael. He's got a lot of armor thanks to that team and will be able to get the kill. The one team announced for charge. See, there's the epicenter. Wipe it out the rest of E home, and they don't Samael even lives. drop Samael. <laughs> what a bait from the kid. My god, evil G. How much HP do they have? Yeah. A lion has seven armor and 777 HP, but he does so much to your hero. Why not just kill him? Universe, and things off here. Here comes in with the side the mines targeting, and they're actually gonna try and go for the Razor first here. Double BKB's activated, they go for fear, trying to lock him down, but the Glimmer came and blink away. He will be able to get some distance. CTY keeps on going, but Universe, he's gonna pop the episode. They actually control CTY and burst him down. Now the episode comes in, but straight for RTK, who's working it up. He will go down as well. Lana pops the tomb, but what factor is it really this late to the game? DDC hits the NPL in the Universe. Maybe they can get that one picked off. Finger of Death is enough to secure that one. One, but everyone else from E-Home is going to fall. EG win yet another team fight, and GG is the call. E-Home, I think, just so desperate to find something. And team fight after team fight, they just keep losing and losing. they got to know they're a drastic net worth behind. The thing is, though, if you're E-Home, you're kind of okay with how you lost. Because you did set the blueprint for how you can disrupt EG's farm early. They gank Sumail often. They put the pressure on him early. They annoyed the hell out of fear with that dual lane at top. And even that bottom lane, the Razor was doing okay. It was just about that one fight mid where everything started to snowball.